Hi everyone, so as this is the beginning of 2023 and my first video of the year, I thought I'd go back to a few basics. I was going to do a large video, but I'm going to split it up into smaller ones that are easier to work with. So today we're looking at primarily the ruler and how you can make it work for you. I have gone for a ruler that has a grid system on it, but it also has this extra line on it, which is a center point. So from the center point, it goes out from one to 15 either side. And this one is a traditional one, one to 30. So we'll see how we use those as we go. It's also got a metal edge for cutting against. But we're going to look at how a simple um, gadget in your craft stash can make such a world of difference. So I've got the white on here so it shows up a little bit better on the video. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at, <coughs> excuse me, is having is how we make borders on um, our items that we're doing. So if I bring in a piece of card, I'm going to work on 15 centimeter or six inch square card, but we're not going to deal with measurements particularly today. So I'm going to cut this down to 13. I will always put the imperial measurement in the top left corner. So there we have 13 centimetres and when we put it onto our card we've got a nice white border. Okay, beautiful design. So we're going to look at putting a border all the way around that. So I'm going to take my double-sided tape, use anything as usual in your craft stash that you're used to. And we're going to fix it down firmly. Right, that's the only thing we've measured. Now, when we look at our ruler, if we go to the opposite side to our main numbers, each of these little squares are a half centimetre. So we're going to put a half centimetre border all the way around our piece here. Let's move that out of the way. We're going to use our first line on our ruler and we're going to place it so that the first line is absolutely straight with the edge of our paper. There we go. And a nice sharp knife come down. Turn it round, line up again with this and we're going all the way round And there is a half centimetre border all the way around our card. There's no deviation at all on there. So we're going to bring in our main card. Now what I wanted to show you another trick is that when you put it on here there is not much leeway to get it wrong. Okay, so we want to make sure that this is absolutely right. So what I'm going to do is get my card ready. Going all the way around.
There we go. So, I haven't taken any of the covering off and I use a lot of paper clips for making boxes and all sorts. So I've got my paper clips here. I haven't taken any of the stuff off yet. Place on my clip there and there. It doesn't really matter <clears throat> where they are around there. Fold in the edges of these clips and then they lie flat on your table and then I know that nothing is going to move. I can then just lift up the back and at the moment I'm just looking to get one piece fitted down. So I've removed one piece across the bottom. I know it's exact. I know every other piece that I take off will go exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to just take the rest of the um, tape backing off. There is number three, <clears throat> absolutely in the place that I wanted it to be. Okay, so already a nice card with all the extra bits ready. Okay, so let's just have a look what happens if I want to do something more intricate. Okay, I'm going to just put that to one side. What if I wanted to do a triangle? If I take another piece of beautiful card, I'm going to cut it down a bit smaller and let's go for a 10 centimeter square. And I'm going to place it on my trimmer and I'm going to come down through the middle so that I've got triangles. Okay. So we're just going to work on one triangle and I'm going to do it with black so that you can see it really um, well on the video. <coughs> so won't go on that way so I'm going to turn it that way because I want plenty of extra room around. So I'm just going to place these. Don't be afraid of going past the end with your tape. I'd rather it was that way than you leave yourself short. Take these off. We don't want our piece to move. Sorry, it keeps going out of shot. Okay, so we're going to place that onto there. Okay. All the extra bits you can poke back in. Right, I'm going to take this and using the same half centimeter border, I'm going to first of all take the long straight edge here, right, cut along there, line up with each of the um, sides of my card, and we have an absolute perfect border all the way round. Okay, so you can make all sorts of borders around whatever shapes you want. Obviously, circles are a bit more difficult, um, but then I would go with a pencil and mark all the way round and cut with my knife. 
So let's put that to one side for the moment. And the next one we will do is how to do an aperture, perfect aperture, using your ruler. Right, this, this technique is going to show you how to cut an aperture. Now I can cut an aperture into my main card and I'll show you that um, afterwards. But I prefer to cut my aperture into a spare piece of card that will fit on the top and then I can add a border all the way around and actually cut a double aperture. So let's see, first of all, if we take our centre piece that we want to cut out, this has got a, um, a canvas texture to it, so I'm going to flip it over and I always mark on the back. So let's have a look at our ruler and you'll see that it has marks every um, five centimetres. This is a centimetre across the top and every half centimetre. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my aperture so that I've got a border of three centimetres. Now three centimetres, I've got one, two, three, four, five, is that centre line which looks rather like a train track. Okay, so I'm going to take that train track and put it down the side of my card and I'm going to mark from top to bottom my three centimetre line. Turn it round, line it up, be accurate. Again, turn it round. So I'm putting three centimetres all the way around. You can um, use inches, whatever. There we go. So there is my three centimetre border and I've gone from top to bottom. That, that is important. Okay, right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my knife and where these cross at the corner of my aperture, I'm just going to freehand along the lines, just cut the corner piece. What I want to make sure is that I don't go beyond those corners when I'm cutting because that will make make a mess of the corners. So I've just done the four corners. I can now put my ruler on, use the metal edge, line it up and come down and you can feel it give when it gets down to where you've cut it. All right. Be careful with your lining up. But you can hear the knife as it goes through and then suddenly you'll hear it run clear at the end. And my last one. You can see where to start because you've got your line out to the right and where to stop because this is your line out to the right. Okay. So then it's just caught slightly. There we go. There is our perfect aperture. Piece that comes out obviously you keep for something else. Right so now I'm going to place that onto my piece of gold and I'm going to go around the edge. I'm not trying to do an accurate placement on here I just want a nice border all the way round which I shall cut, but I need room to move, move in the middle. So take all my tape off. Okay. 
and place it in the middle. <coughs> right, let's go back to our ruler and we've got this metal edge which will give me a very fine border if I use it. So what I'm going to do now is to place this on the lined up with my white edge there and I'm going to come in I'm not going right to the end I can do that by hand turn it round line it up turn it round Be prepared to move your ruler around a bit until you get you know that you've got it right. Right, now I can go back any little bits that aren't quite cut through, I can just nick. There you go. So let's bring in a spare sheet. Of card so that you can see now I've got a perfect border all the way around but I'm not going to leave it there right I'm going to come back with my half centimeter rule and I'm going to place that on there and I'm just coming in a little bit by eye I don't want it quite half a centimeter but you can soon just that because you can see the straight line you can just come in a little way and adjust it to whatever you want it to be I don't think that went quite it's better slipped a little bit So let's bring in that and we now can see that we've got a beautifully cut aperture, a tiny little mini piece inside and a border all the way around the outside. And all we have used is a pencil and a ruler and our cutting knife. So let's go back to finish this off. And we're going to use the piece of gold that we pulled out the middle. So taking one side off and I'm going to place it onto there. I've only removed one side. Happy with that put my clips on and place down so then I can just easily take off all the rest in turn and it's fixed down this is the piece that came out the middle okay so I have taken that piece out the middle and I've put um, it through the embossing folder. I'm going to make corners. So I'm going to bring this in and I'm using my um, lines on my ruler and I'm going to cut three centimeter squares. I only need two. So I'm using the train track to line up. So there's one, two, and then I want to take my ruler straight across the middle and make two triangles from that one. And two triangles from this one. 
I've got plenty more left over that I can make other corners. So I'm going to bring this back in and we want to put our corners on. Now if I put it up against the corner, it looks okay, but I prefer to bring it in a fraction, which means then I've got this white border added all the way around my corner and it looks a lot better. So I'm going to bring in some wet glue very very cold in here so glue's not running very well so we'll go to a solid stick and we're going to fix our corners in with the little border opposite corners and that little bit of embossing on it is just adding a little interest. I'll show you a plain one in a minute. There. So all we've used is a ruler, pencil, um, and craft knife and a, a little bit of embossing on those but I'll bring in another one here we have the plain one so without any embossing at all okay. so you can choose what what you do to put in there now I have um, just fixed this top and bottom so I've got the double-sided tape underneath ready under there but I wanted to show you that you can slide any um, picture in there that you wish let's find we'll use that one just for now and if I cut that down I'm not measuring you that if you've got a blank card you can then slide in whatever you want to try different ideas and that that is pretty good it's got a nice feature all the way around um, but before you commit yourself you can slide all sorts of bits in my fingers in there to try different elements. Um, what if I take a piece of decoupage? Okay, I can take that, slide it underneath, and I can see whether I prefer that one inside. Let's shift him around a little bit. So that's quite nice. Okay, so I can apply a little bit of wet glue underneath to hold it there, and then I can simply get my tweezers, which have run away for the moment, and simply take the double sided tape away from underneath when I'm ready and fix down. So that's a good way of just having basic cards made and then see what you want to slot in and leave these edges open so it's just fixed top and bottom and then you can try all sorts of pictures behind before you decide on what you want your card to be but they're good basic basic cards you've got plenty of room to put a little greeting underneath okay so there is a 
lovely idea for you to start off. So we'll come back in a minute and we'll look into some other ideas. Right, silly idea. These are the pieces that came out of our aperture. Now, normally I want a white piece in the inside and this, but this gold isn't big enough to do my borders. Let me pop that underneath so you can see better. So what I'm going to do is to take my gold, take my ruler and go from corner to corner. Craft knife and we're going through. So this time we have two corners. I'm now going to take this and put some glue onto there and fix my corner so that I've got this border all the way round. Okay. Take my next piece glue onto there, go to the opposite corner and simply do that. So we haven't covered these two points here but look when you put it onto your card how beautiful that is, and yet we've used a smaller piece of gold to make a lovely border. So this could go on sort of any any way you wish. So it's a, a nice way of using up your scraps that would have probably gone in the bin. So let's put that to one side. Now we're going to look at positioning. If we look here we've got a centre point, if I can bring it down onto there. This is a centre point on our ruler and the numbers go out to 15, out to 15. Now if I place that on my piece of paper, I can move this so that I've got the same number that side as that side and I know immediately I mark top and bottom, that is the centre of my card. Okay. Turn it round, sliding it across. Right. If I put seven on that side, this is seven and three quarters, I can move it. And then I've got an exact measurement so I've got seven and th three millimeters seven and three millimeters so it wasn't quite seven and a half right or it wasn't quite three inches if you'd have relied on measuring three inches you'd have had two different measurements so this way we know we have the exact center so there we go, that is correct to an eighth of an inch or one millimetre. Right, beautifully done. So let's have a look this one. Turn it upside down and we're going to mark on here. Once again, I take my ruler, I'm looking for this centre point. Let me do it so um, let's put this under so it'll show up better. That's better. Right, so I want to find this centre point, and there, if I look, this one is five and a, and a tiny bit, five and a tiny bit. I know that is my centre point. There. So all I need to do is just mark the top top bit there. Turn it round. I want to make want the centre this way. Now I've got on this one I had a straight edge. This one has bits that are bulbing bulbousing out, if that's a word. So I'm going to go on there. I've got six and a half, four and a half, move it along. 
and I've uh, let's see right at five and a half I've matched up my number here with my number over there. All right, so I'm going to just mark that there. And I just need to mark this outside piece here. Now, I've just put a slight dent in those from the back. I bring this in, make sure it opens the right way, and it's easier for my me to use this for the video. I can now line up my little notches absolutely. Uh, and that is upside down. Okay, these things happen. So all I need to do now is to turn it round. And then I can just simply take off the outside pencil marks. If I don't want this little notch here, I, I just take um, my ball tool and I can just do those down because all we've done is just stretch the paper a fraction. So they've gone. There is my motif in the front that is absolutely to the millimetre or the eighth of an inch centered. Okay. Another way of doing it, get my card opening the right way, is to simply take the ruler and mark the diagonals. this one and then I can put this and I can move it now so that all of my points of my picture are along the diagonals. Okay, I don't know whether this will no it won't reach in. Okay, so Okay. Place it to match two diagonals and then shift it down. And make sure that all the points are exactly on your lines and then simply rub out the extra pieces. So that's another one perfectly centred on your card. Okay, and finally we're just going to look at a different way of using your ruler. Right, so we've got another piece of gold mirror card and on the back I've put some strips of double-sided tape. We're going to look at making strips to go onto cards. So if I take my ruler, we know that um, these are five centimetre strips. Okay, so if I take this and line that up with the edge of my ruler and I take my craft knife. Whoops.
but that didn't go right and if it doesn't go right it's because I've done a lot of cutting with my knife and it needs a new blade all right okay so we're going to go to this side which I've prepared as well and you can hear the difference with the new blade so there I have a beautiful strip to go on my card let's come down with a second one there is my second strip so what if I now take this and we've already put the double-sided tape on so it's just a case now I've just got the neighbour's burglar alarm going off so we can take our strip here place it down through there right and I've done that by eye so let's take that trim off any excess now I'm going to show you another trick using the grid on our ruler so take the next one and this one is almost too grids on there so if I take it over there and I'm actually going to make it the same on here I can simply place that against my ruler lay it along there snip off the excess on that side. Here we go. And I've perfectly placed my strips. I've only used a fraction of my mirror card, but because I've put the um, double sided tape on before I've done it, I know that this is edge to edge stuck. All right. Okay, I'm going to cover one more, one more point. I can make them. Let's go here a minute. I can make this a small, as small as I like to make my own peel off piece. And I know that however small it is, I have double sided tape that is from the top to the bottom and edge to edge. Right, so don't think you have to do wide strips. Okay. Now, one other thing I was going to do. Not right. I'm just going to cover one more trick um, for you to use throughout the year. Um, my husband hates it when I use these tiny little um, squares for decoupage because they're static, and when I walk through the house, I drop them all over the floor as I as they drop off and he does my hoovering so he's not a happy bunny when I've been playing with these so I use a lot of duct tape in my construction work so you can use cellar tape you can do all sorts but do test whether it's going to stick I have come across one um, company that you can't stick anything to the tops of their decoupage pads so um, persevere and find something right so this one here I'm going to rub down and this is on the paper side and so when I pick this up it is pulling all of the little paper bits off for me and I can just come in now with my pokey tool not easy to get the first one off sometimes 
So there we go. I've had to hand cut these because I didn't have any small um, pieces left. So you can just pick up your bits and just place them exactly where you want and you don't have to use them all at one particular time just place your covering back again and it's ready for the next time it will just peel back and you start again but if you have a look here all of my little bits of paper are now stuck to this tape and not stuck to me okay so there is, I don't know whether we can put this on anything. Nope, I haven't got a card that will go in. So I think we'll stick that just on the inside there. Okay. Okay, so use your ruler to its best advantage and happy crafting and God bless you all.